Hello and welcome for welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. All right, so it's been at least a hot minute since I did anything or said anything controversial, so I figured better correct that. And hence this video, context transition is for suckers. All right, so this video actually, as you might have guessed from what you're seeing on your screen, this video came out of a video I just recently posted on my other channel, Dax for Humans, where the goal of that channel is just to simply is to teach people DAX uh, in very simple terms and make it very easy for people to pick up and use DAX. Um, so my most recent video is this episode eight here where I say, let's talk about context. And in that video, I essentially explain that context is, you know, the, the, the boogeyman of DAX, if you will, is nothing scary or complex, it's just filters, right? So you, you know, <laughs> You put banana or pickle in a table and it filters those rows to the banana rows and pickle rows, et cetera. So I got a few comments on this. Uh, one was on LinkedIn. It's like, well, it's, you know, context is simple if you, if you don't explain row context or context transition. And then I got another comment on that video actually out on YouTube that said, you know, hey, um, really like the, you know, simple explanation for context. You know, you know, can, I'm, I'm waiting to hear how you're gonna explain a context transition. Uh, in just as simple terms. Okay, so I decided to basically make the answer to that uh, video, to that comment. I, I answered it on the on YouTube, but figured to make this video on Microsoft hates Greg, uh, and you'll understand why. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this video. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, so context transition. Uh, now we're going to be using uh, SQL BI's understanding context transition as kind of like the basis. Um, where, you know, they talk about, you know, they're using, it's not quite the AdventureWorks. I don't know what database they're using, but I, I used AdventureWorks to emulate this. Um, I think it's pretty good emulation. Um, and so what I did was I just created this context for transition is for suckers, Power BI desktop, and we'll get into it. So, all right. So we basically have just, you know, product key, product code, product name, color, unit price, and we'll get into the rest of these here in a second. All right, so the first thing that uh, context transition goes and kind of explains is if you can, hey, you know, do the sum of the unit price. Um, so I have my sum of the unit price right here. And you can see that they're all the same, all the way down, uh, you get the same results. Um, and the reason for that is, is, uh, is because the sum function ignores row context. So it only considers filter context. And so since, you know, these rows have row context, which by the way, Row context, still just a filter, just a filter. It filters it to that row, right? That's what row context is. Um, you know, what's going on is that some the sum function is ignoring the row context. It only considers filter context. There is no filter context because there's only row context being, you know, involved here. And so therefore you get basically it just sums up, you know, all of the unit prices is in prices in the table. All right, easy enough, right? So then the article goes on to explain that, hey, if you uh, wrap that in a calculate, then calculate does fancy stuff with row context and switching between row context and filter context. In fact, what's going on, you know, just briefly, is that calculate is turning the row context into filter context, and that's the context transition. Okay, so that is this column. So now you can see that now we just return back the individual results that we have in our unit price column for each row, all right? But <laughs> why? Why? If you're in row context, just get the unit price and you get the same answers. That's what row context is for. There's no reason to wrap it in a, a calculate and a sum, you know, for no good reason. Um, and, and just to get back the same result, if you just referred to the column in row context, duh. All right. So, all right. So, I mean, it's probably used as just an example, you know, for SQL BI. I get it. Um, they're just trying to explain it and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, we'll go on with this article here. So now they're saying, okay, um, uh, that's just using the sales table. Okay, here we go. So then they're saying, well, what if you want to get the a column where you're calculating the unit price, that's the sum of the unit price for all um, products that are have the same color and the same unit price. Okay, so same color, same unit price, um, you want to get, you know, a sum that returns that and you want to ignore basically just ignore product key um, you just want to consider that the unit price and the color are the same all right so they give this calculation here so let's take a look at that one uh, so first problem is it doesn't work <laughs> it 
you get this circular dependency was detected. And it's it's very helpful because it says product column. It doesn't even refer to like what the column is. Uh, product some kind of <laughs> unit price. You know, that's this or yeah, the unit price. So it's referring to the unit price and then product column. So I'm assuming product column is this column. So we can get around this, right? Um, we can actually get around this by doing this. And I can delete this column here. Why is it creating a, circ a, a circular reference? God only knows. Um, but it's probably because there's two columns that are using calculate is the only thing I can figure. Um, because if I remove that column, remove that column, I do not get the sort of descending. There we go. So I do not get the, uh, that's sort of ascending, but I don't get the circular reference. Well, maybe we at least have a value here. But it was sort of descending. Our unit price, maybe we'll sort that ascending maybe. Nope, that's bad. Okay, we'll just sort this descending. We'll keep going on. All right, so here we have, okay, so now the other thing is uh, it doesn't work. Uh, still doesn't work. And that's because I have extra columns here. I got product code and product name, uh, which are unique to the rows. So if, do I really want to get this to work? I would add. So product, product name, and all, oops, back here. Oh, Dax, editing, so much fun with the crappy editor. Uh, product code. Okay, so now if I do that, so now, now I get the right answers, right? So I ignore, I'm ignoring product key, I'm ignoring product code, I'm ignoring product name, and I'm getting back. This is going to be the, you know, basically red in the same unit price. So one, two, three, four, five. If we multiplied that together, we get this answer. Okay, so but I have to, you know, again, you I mean you may have a very wide table. Um, you'd have to add all the things that you want to ignore, right, um, into this all statement, uh, which. Makes no sense to me, um, especially when you can just avoid calculate and 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 not actually and not have it, not have to worry about it. So in this case, you know we're following. <laughs> there's the pattern, right? Create some bars, create a table bar, use an X aggregator, and your life is easy. Um, so basically, I'm just grabbing the color row context. I'm grabbing the unit price row context. Then I'm introducing my own filter context. So I'm saying filter all product where the color equals the color, the unit price equals the unit price. Then some X across that table, the unit price, and you can see I get the same exact results as if I was doing this. Now that said, you know, to me, this is intuitively much more obvious what is going on, right? This kind of obfuscates what is going on. You know, you want to get all of the colors and all the all the same colors and all the same unit prices, right? But nowhere is it mentioned anywhere that that's what this is doing, or even hinted at, right? I'm just ignoring these columns. Um, but how is it that I'm not ignoring color and unit price, right? Well, it's because of the fancy row context and the filter filter context and all that stuff the calculate does. But it, it's obfuscated, right? And obfuscated code is not good code. We learned this in Perl days, right? You can write some crazy Perl um, that's really fast and really, you know, really small and dense as far as, you know, the, the actual code, but it's you can't read it. As a human being, you just can't read that code. It's uh, it's it's obtuse. So to me, it's a much better uh, solution is to just avoid calculate and do it this way. Um, the way you write, write, you know, all your measures and other things, you, you know, you avoid circular reference problems. Uh, number one, uh, as if you when you're using calculate, uh, and two, you know, it just is better code in my opinion because it's more obvious what is going on. Um, and so, at the end of the day, how do you explain context transition to people that are new to DAX and make it easy to understand? The simple answer is you don't. You don't explain it at all because there's no reason to, to understand it or know about it um, if you're not using calculate. Um, yes, there is the calculate that is the, Im, you know, the, imp, the implicit calculate that wraps all measures and all of that sort of stuff. Maybe I'll cover all that in another video. Um, but as for calculated columns, there's no reason to even delve into, into a context transition or anything like that because it's just not warranted to explain even explain the concept. Um, so <laughs> that's it for this video. There again. You know, what do I always say? You know, DAX is easy. Calculate makes DAX hard. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.